When it comes to SaaS, this really means you're building a secure foundation and it means you're ensuring you can do things like meet the requirements for compliance that your customers might have. Welcome back to the Azure Essential Show. I'm your host, Thomas. And today's episode, we are going to explain the well-architected framework and discuss how you can apply these principles as you design and build a software as a service solution, which is often referred to as SaaS. To help us, I'm joined by my colleagues, Sergio and John. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thomas. So Sergio, if I'm building a SaaS solution, how does the well-architected framework help me with that? Yeah, great question. So I want to start by saying that the well-architected framework is guidance that applies to anyone using Azure, but we've really sat down and built the workload guidance on top of the well-architected framework so that it's specific to independent software vendors or often known as ISVs. ISVs are organizations that are building SaaS workloads. We want to provide guidance on how to map business requirements onto the, their specific technical requirements. A couple examples might help. So on the one hand, we might have a brand new startup that is limited in people and resources. It can be difficult for startup to design a SaaS workload that strikes the balance, um, such as time to market, profitability, and quality. So on the other hand, a more established ISV might look to pivot to a multi-tenant solution or modernize their existing product. In this case, the ISV might have suitable people and resources for the job, but they still need to make trade-offs that can directly affect how their business operates. This is all based on the five pillars of the War Architecture Framework. Okay, that's actually a good transition to talk about these five pillars of the well-architected framework. Um, John, can you tell us how these optimize your SaaS workload? Yeah, sure. So as Sergio said, we've taken each of the five pillars and we've looked at how they apply to SaaS specifically. Now, there's quite a lot to say about each pillar, actually, but I'm going to give a brief example of each just to give you a flavor. So the first pillar we can talk about is security. Um, when it comes to SaaS, this really means you're building a secure foundation and it means you're ensuring you can do things like meet the requirements for compliance that your customers might have, your customers who are going to be relying on your SaaS solution. Um, the second pillar is cost optimization. And typically this is about uh, maximizing the value of your spend. But in the case of SaaS, it's also about relating that value to revenue. So you don't find yourself, for example, in a situation where your costs might be increasing without having a corresponding increase in revenue, which is a bad thing for a, for a business. The third pillar is reliability. When you're building SaaS, the solution really is your business. And so it's really important to make sure that the solution is sound. Um, and also because your customers are going to be relying on it potentially for their own business as well. The fourth pillar we talk about is operational excellence. Operating a SaaS product is often very, very different to simply shipping software, uh, which ISVs might be used to do, used to doing. Um, so you might, for example, need 24 by seven operations teams and your own team will have to understand not just how the software is built, but also how it runs in production. Um, and also, we one of the things we spend a lot of time talking about is that operating SaaS at scale requires thinking differently about how you manage resources than you might in other cloud-based solutions. So for example, if you've got a solution that requires deploying dozens or even hundreds of databases, say one for every customer, you're going to need to invest in automation and tooling to manage them at scale because it's not feasible to do that manually. And the final pillar is performance efficiency. We know that if we're going to scale effectively, then it's important to know all of your scale points, which are often things like the number of customers, the number of transactions per user, and so forth. And these can also really affect your architecture. Awesome. So yeah, the well-architected framework can really help ISVs to establish a solid foundation, especially now with this focus on SaaS solutions, especially. So Sergio, how will someone who builds SaaS solutions understand how to apply this guidance and make all of these trade-offs in a way that makes sense for them? Yeah, so the work of the framework for SaaS, we provide a series of design areas. Um, these design areas are targeted guidance about major topics that you need to consider uh, when planning your SaaS. Um, things like networking, data, or incident management. So each of these design areas is based on our experience with SaaS and gives some suggested trade-offs or recommendations that help as your business grows and scales. Uh, for example, 
one of the design areas is about the financial side of SaaS, billing and cost management. You'll need to consider how you're, you price your solution. Do you charge a monthly fee for each customer, for each user, or even for each transaction? It's something for you to kind of consider uh, and understand the different trade-offs. That decision is going to affect your marginal costs and in turn can change how you design your entire solution, especially as you scale and grow that solution. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so, John, what other strategies do we need to keep in mind? One of the big ones to keep in mind with SaaS is a tenancy model. So multi-tenancy is a strategy that often is used to achieve cost efficiency with SaaS solutions. But that cost efficiency really needs to be balanced against performance and reliability and security. Um, and then, of course, there's also just all of the general guidance that we give in the well-architected framework that applies to everybody, which helps to assure that you're building a, a resilient, secure, efficient, performant solution um, that, that balances both your requirements as an ISV, but also your customers' requirements who are depending on your solution. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially, I think, the multi-tenancy aspect and obviously also all the other things you just mentioned are very, very important if you want to build a scalable and secure solution. Um, so, Sergio, what are some of the other factors customers need to keep in mind as they evaluate their options for implementing the Well Architecture Framework for SaaS? Yeah, evaluating is going to be a journey. Uh, it's really important to note that as you iterate and optimize each of these five pillars, there is going to be trade-offs. For example, um, you may start off creating a centralized network for all your customers to reduce your operational burden. Um, that can bring, bring some costs down. But on the other hand, it's going to make it hard to give customers a degree of isolation they might require to meet their compliance needs. So it's something that you're going to have to balance as you go on. Yeah, I mean, those trade-offs are important, obviously, to keep in mind and make sure that, like, how do you handle these and, and how do you implement these things, right? Um, so for people who are now watching, what is the best way to get started with the SaaS workloads for the well-architected framework? Yeah, great question. The first place to start really is by going to the assessment for the SaaS workload. Uh, this assessment is going to help you determine which parts of the framework you can prioritize as you improve. Uh, the assessment goes through a series of questions that you look upon and reflect and answer based on the given workload. Um, once you answer those questions, you're given a report and you can track your progress across all the individual design areas. Um, so you can take advantage of milestones to review, iterate and maintain your cloud journey, whether that is on a monthly, quarterly or yearly basis. Um, we have a number of resources to help you learn and, and grow as you start to evolve in the different design areas in our Microsoft Learn doc documentation. Um, the SAS workload documentation specifically goes into all the design methodologies and principles, and it provides, an actual, provides actionable guidance um, based on those world architected best practices so that you can build and operate SAS on Azure at scale. Awesome. So, well, this has been a great conversation, Sergio and John. Uh, thanks for so much for this great information. Awesome. Thanks yeah, for thanks. having us, Thomas. Thanks for having us. We're thrilled uh, to get the word out about this framework and what we can do for SaaS workloads. It's great. Thank you for having us. Awesome. So thank you for everyone watching. You can find the links for all the resources we discussed in this episode in the description below. Also, give our show a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified when a new episode drops. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on the Azure Essentials Show.